It's September in central Arizona. The Arizona elk adventure we showed you last week is still months off. And I'm like a kid in a candy store, bouncing with excitement, anticipating the first hunt of the season. And I'm not even the guy with the tag. Regular viewers know I've got an antelope addiction. I truly love everything antelope and never miss an opportunity to hunt them. And I rarely pass on a chance to hunt with my lifelong friend, Jerry Pritchard. When you put the two together, there's nothing gonna keep me away. This is one of those hunts that, even though you're not the tag holder, you really get excited about. It's Arizona and it's pronghorn. And anyone who knows much about pronghorn hunting knows that Arizona is the promised land of pronghorn hunting. Our pre-hunt plan was pretty simple. Jerry wanted to set up camp about five days prior to the season to really get a good feel for the country, the antelope, and to find the very best spots from which to set up our glassing operation. Well, the other fellow was right. This is, uh, this is quite the spot. This old ranch, uh, I didn't know this old ranch existed. The other fellow told me that uh, vantage point would be good and I'd have shelter from the sun and the rain. I planned to join him for the last day of scouting and hopefully we'd be able to pin down a special buck that Jerry's been waiting a lifetime to hunt. I've been uh, applying for Arizona antelope for about 18 years now. I had 18 bonus points when I finally drew this tag. I have a friend of mine made a recommendation this would be a great unit to find a Boone and Crockett class buck. So I waited a long time for this, but it's a great spot. We're in the central part of Arizona, uh, near Winslow, Arizona, and uh, this unit was recommended to me by a friend who uh, has done some work for the Game and Fish here in the area and, and uh, thought it would be a great uh, sleeper unit, if you will. It's not really popular with uh, a lot of the big time antelope hunters. There he is. Sir, how you doing? Randy, how are you? I found you. Good, good to, see to see you again. What do you think of this location? Well, I think it's really good, but I'm wondering why you're sitting out here in the <laughs> rain when... <laughs> It just started, it Did just it? started. <laughs> if there's one thing I'm worried about on this hunt, it's the weather. And people would say, why would you worry about weather in a place like Arizona? Well, in Arizona, you have from about July through the end of September, that's the, the monsoon season, where you get periods of rain. This is when they get most of their moisture here in the Southwest. And if it rains and rains and rains, not only does it make for difficult filming, but it kind of messes up the hunting because the pattern of the animals change as the water sources change. Getting around to some of these places is gonna be difficult because there's gonna be lots of mud and, and big water holes. So I am worried that if we get a lot of rain, this hunt is gonna be way more difficult than what I had expected. Without the luxury of being able to camp on a water hole, this hunt would become pure spot and stock, and scouting meant hours and hours behind the glass, eliminating ground, locating quality bucks, and then learning their patterns. That's what led Jerry to this abandoned homestead, its commanding view of the area, and its proximity to at least two big bucks he'd spotted earlier in the week. Boy, that's a great big one. <laughs> that's a big one. That's even better look to that guy yesterday. This is the third time we spotted this guy in this general area, so. Yeah, you got a big Roman nose. <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't hyperventilate when the time comes. <laughs> <laughs> but one like that could do it to a guy. For 18 years, my old friend Jerry Pritchard has waited to see this sunrise. It's first light on opening morning of Jerry's Arizona antelope hunt, and we're hard at it, glassing thousands of acres of grassland, hoping to locate the big buck we saw the night before. In many ways, Arizona leads the way in public-private cooperation when it comes to hunting. Much of the land we're looking over is actually private. But due to a unique partnership between the state and the landowners, all of this ground is open to public hunting. This particular 
unit is, for antelope anyway, is made up primarily of two major ranches uh, that allow access to hunters here in Arizona through cooperative work they do with the Arizona Game and Fish Department. So these ranches were cattle ranches, and so as such, they've got a lot of grassland, they've got a lot of open areas, a lot of water, which really benefits the wildlife. And so it's a real plus for hunters to be able to come and access just tens of thousands of acres here in this unit. Jerry, I think you gotta come and look at this one. I put the bigger spotting scope on there and now you can see them. It looks like the buck from yesterday, but I could be wrong. Oh, I think that is him, Randy. I don't know how he ended up way over there. And if it ain't, he's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go shoot that one. I mean, that's two miles away and yeah, yeah. I can see his prongs from yeah. here. <laughs> Even if it's not the one we saw yesterday, that's one we should go shoot, I think. There's a third one there, too. Looks like a doe one too far. Those of you who hunt public land know that there's kind of an unspoken ethic or behavior that's acceptable out here. And if I see somebody else going in on a stock and it's an animal I'd spotted but they beat me to it, you know what, I just pull back and I watch from afar. I don't interfere with them. It, it, to me, it's fun to watch. There are those guys in the quad. They see the quad, I'm sure. We're behind the cow, we're doing our gig. We get slowed down by some does that we got to negotiate and get around. And behind us pulls up this side-by-side all-terrain vehicle. And the guys look at us. And then they go a little bit further and they stop and they're looking at us. And they can see the antelope up on the hill above us. I think it is the same buck. To yeah, but I do. And the reason I say that is because of the shape of his horn. I guess on this buck. Yep. 83 or 84. Okay. Oh, shit, they're driving cross country. They're driving cross country. Oh, no, wait a minute. There is a road there. I take that back. Is it open? Yes. I still think it's bull that they're doing this. Yeah, when they know we're out here. But there is a road there. Watch it. He drives up there and shoots him. It was so frustrating and so, how should I say? It, 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 that type of behavior is so unacceptable, even though it's legal. And yeah, this is everybody's land. Everyone has the same amount of right to it as anyone else. But if we don't have some sort of ethic among us uh, about how we're gonna behave and how we're gonna interact, you know, that guy's a jerk. There's no other way to say it. If you would go and do that to another hunter, you don't deserve to be out here. You don't deserve this great privilege of hunting public land. Go home if you can't be any more of a sports person than that. First day, you've waited 18 years. These guys in that ATV now have them spooked and pressured. We're not gonna get that super good look on them. Yep. It's up to you, but I would say we pull back, we go back to our fort, and we just wait till that right chance. Yep, That's, let's do that. I mean, we're in no big hurry. It just saddens me when people I do know. that. Because you got to know they talked about it. Oh, public land. I, we yep. got as much right to that buck as they do. And in reality, all, in, in legality, yes, they do. But there's a lot of things that are legal that aren't what I would call respectful. Since inception in 1965, over $210 million of land and water conservation fund money has been invested into public access for Arizona. The annual economic contribution of hunters, anglers, and wildlife watchers is $2.1 billion, a large portion being dependent upon access provided by the Land and Water Conservation Fund. It's the second day of Jerry's antelope hunt, and Jerry and I are taking advantage of a high afternoon sun to try and locate another worthy buck. 
What are you finding, Jer? Well, I think I've got a, a pretty good one here. I, I'd, he sure looks a lot like that one we saw before season that we wanted to go get. And he looks, he looks bigger than that buck we chased yesterday. I think they were just over this next rise, closer to those trees, I think. Holy cow, that's him. Yeah, that's a nice looking buck there. That is him. Boy, that's a heavy one too. Yeah. We just gotta get him comfortable that we're nothing more than a cow. He doesn't seem alarmed, but no. He's definitely come our way some. Yeah, he yeah. has. Oh, he's trotting now, isn't he? Yep, he sure does. Yeah. Okay. That's why I'm wondering if he's seeing something. Yeah, he sees not. some antelope over there. You know, with him going like that, Randy, yeah. we've got this cut we can use right here to get up parallel with him. Yeah. He won't see us down there at all. Yeah. We get behind the ridge and we're coming up and it's a long loop we're making. I mean, we went probably west a half mile, but then we went south probably another mile and a half. And just as we get to where, all right, this is where we think they're at, out comes an afternoon thunderstorm. Just terrible. Something like an afternoon thunderstorm to make things interesting. Last place we should be is on a ridge right now. Lightning crashing all around us. We have to get off the ridge. We just huddle down and hope that we don't get hit by lightning and it's pelting rain. Jerry claims this is gonna be the change of momentum for us here. This is exactly what we needed. The antelope had to lay down, they had to think this over. Gives us a chance to move in. Let's go find this thing and get him killed, Jerry. Now let's do it. Good as new. Good as new here. Yeah. Just what we talked about, let's shimmy between tree to tree until we can get a view of him. Okay. I got him. I got him. Yeah, I got him. When we got within about 250 yards in that situation and we had kind of the cow decoy in front of us and they were not alarmed, I had a real good chance to look through the spotting scope at this particular antelope and he had length, he had the shape that I was looking for. He was just a beautiful animal with, with the jet black on his nose. There's two fighting of them. There's two fighting. You want to sneak closer here? The closer the better, because I can tell you I'm pretty nervous. my left side. With your left hand. In. I gotta slide way this way or do it. Okay. Is that he's up. He's up. Tell me. Just whenever you're ready. I have no idea. I must have missed him. Yeah. All right. Let's hold on. Son of a Just wait. We got to clear the doors.
It's always a, a guessing game as to you know how vital that that hit was this particular antelope moved off and with antelope they usually don't move off if you've hit them with a very good shot and so that had me very concerned right off the bat the the animal back actually left the field so when we walked over we saw traces of blood we're gonna find him he's hit more blood there more blood here more blood there and the blood there. The curse of having that monsoon rainstorm we had to wait out actually became a blessing because it made the ground really wet and really soft so we could track this buck, find a little blood here, find a little blood there, a little blood here. Pretty soon we're finding big pools of blood and bigger and bigger and bigger. Here, here, there. I know Jerry's feeling bad at that time because we all want to have just a drop dead, knock him down kind of hit, but sometimes it doesn't work that way. That's fresh blood going this way, this way. The uh, antelope had begun to bleed quite a bit um, in patches. When it would stop, it would bleed a lot. So that was giving me a, a little bit of hope that, you know, it, it may not have been a perfect shot, but it would be enough to kill the antelope. Yeah, that's him. We finally found the antelope and got up there. Uh, he was trying to get out of his bed from the shot and couldn't quite get up from it. And uh, we were able to place a finishing shot then. Watch your crosshairs. Knock the fur off him. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jer, you got your buck. <laughs> now that was a hell of a finishing shot there, Jerry Pritchard. You gotta feel better about that shot. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> well, you slowed him down that first shot, and that quickly. Jerry has tagged his Arizona buck that he's been looking for. And to be honest with you, I really didn't know if it was a super big buck, if it was an average buck or whatever. And then we walk up there and this thing comes up and in and back. I'm like, holy smokes, Jerry, I can see why you wanted to shoot this buck. This is a super quality buck. Congratulations on your first Arizona antelope. Thank you, I waited That's 18 years one. to get one like that. Wow. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Sorry that had to go on so long. That was not my intention, believe me. Is that what you're looking for, Jeff? That's what I was looking for. The combination of the excitement and the adrenaline and then the euphoria I felt followed by the uh, just a little bit of depression. And as a hunter, that's that's important because you you wanna you wanna not injure an animal. You want to make that first shot count. You want to make it a fatal shot. I didn't in this case. And quite frankly, it, it bothered me a little bit, even though I was very, very happy that I had harvested this large animal and this beautiful animal. So, you know, as I reflect on it, uh, of course, I'm very, very happy with the animal that I got. But this particular time, I, I, I wish I had uh, done it better than I did. I think the animal deserved it and I didn't deliver. So real paradox for me on this one. I'm trying to be as happy as I can be. I still have that those feelings of uh, I didn't do the right thing for, for me or the animal, but we did get closure, and that's that's important. Well, will you grant me the honor of uh, gutting and gilling while, <laughs> while you sit down and re recollect your nerves? Well, I don't know. You've already leaped tall buildings in the single bound <laughs> and ran faster than speeding bullets, so I suppose gutting and gilling is just part of the course for you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Jer. Appreciate Thank it. You. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buck. A worthy chase. Yep. Wow. Excellent. Beautiful.